it had already raged in Europe for almost three years. What had begun with an assassination in Sarajevo had grown into a continent-wide inferno involving dozens of countries. By 1917, after 20 million casualties, the war had mired into an unbreakable stalemate. In a desperate attempt to tilt the balance, Germany, which had earlier pledged not to interfere with American shipping, began a policy of unrestricted submarine warfare. Soon, three American ships were sunk. When President Woodrow Wilson learned of further German plans to entice Mexico into an alliance against the United States, he convened a special session of Congress. He asked for and received a declaration of war. Think of what it was they were applauding. My message of today was a message of death for our young men. How strange it seems to applaud that. President Woodrow Wilson. It was soon apparent that the United States was not prepared for war. The regular army was too small, there were shortages of weapons and equipment. There was no air force, but the country quickly became preoccupied with war preparations. In Kalamazoo, the war effort reached a fever pitch. Every loyal American, be he rich or poor, is anxious to do his part toward making victory sure. Kalamazoo Gazette. It is the final struggle between democracy and autocracy. It is up to America to finish the job once and for all. Dr. H.L. Stetson, President, Kalamazoo College. Kaiser Wilhelm of Germany was hung in effigy in the district occupied by the foreign population of the city. The effigy, dressed in red sweater and dark trousers, was hung from the limb of a large tree. Kalamazoo Gazette. many of the people of Europe, and this country too for that matter, uh, didn't believe that a great war was possible. And yet it did come. And the reason it's called a great war is because it was the, it was truly a world war, and it was up to that time uh, the greatest conflict that the human race had ever engaged in, in terms of what's called warfare. Uh, over 10 million people would be dead before World War I was over, and that was uh, an incredible amount of deaths, uh, obviously. Kalamazoo was the home of two National Guard companies commanded by Colonel Joseph B. Westnedge. His father, Thomas, was a Civil War veteran from New York who had settled in Kalamazoo. His mother, Mary, was an accomplished artist. Joseph was born on August 16, 1872 at the family home on Lover's Lane. The third of four children, he and his older brother, Richard, both attended Kalamazoo College, where they were football stars. Westnich played the game of his life. Again and again, he stirred his noble men to greater work by his superb ground gaining and called forth the admiration of the assembled multitude. Kalamazoo College Index. His brother, Richard, graduated from Rush Medical College in Chicago as a physician and had joined the regular army just in time for the Spanish-American War. If Dr. Westnich uses such effective remedies as he dispensed to opposing football teams, he will soon have yellow fever and smallpox relegated to the maladies of the past. Kalamazoo College Index. That year, 1897, the local guard was activated and Joe, who had enlisted four years earlier, was sent to Florida for maneuvers during the Spanish-American War. 
At that time, the Guard operated under a system in which the men elected their own officers and Joe was voted a captain. This system was later abandoned, but because of his leadership abilities, Captain Westnedge retained his rank. Meanwhile, Brother Richard was sent to the Philippines with the regular army. There, an epidemic of typhoid fever broke out and Richard himself was stricken. He recorded his fever daily in his diary. May 27, 1899. I am not well. Temperature, 102 degrees. To bed early. Dr. Richard B. Westnage. A few days later, he died. After Richard's death uh, in 1899, his body was sent back to Kalamazoo where it arrived in 1900. Not long after that, his mother Mary uh, had met an artist by the name of Copini from New York, and she commissioned a piece of artwork uh, in Richard's honor, which he did, and it was installed here uh, in Riverview Cemetery in 1900. With the end of the Spanish-American War, Kalamazoo's National Guard companies returned home and were mustered out of service. Joe entered the paper business in Kalamazoo, eventually becoming assistant manager of the Western Board and Paper Company. In 1900, he married Eva Sebring. They eventually had four children. The military had gotten into his blood, however, so he re-enlisted in the National Guard, remaining a captain. Uh, the National Guard is really a very, very unique organization, even worldwide, because it draws its commitment of people right from a given locality. They're people who know each other, 